All right, so uh, welcome back to the introduction to statistical learning uh, in Python. And we're going to be discussing uh, chapter 11, uh, which is titled Survival Analysis and Sensor Data. Uh, since the theory is basically the same, you know, from both uh, uh, texts, I just borrow, you know, the presentation that I did uh, for the R, you know, uh, 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 book club. So if there's time, I hope to uh, cover some of the Python code that will be, you know, presented here, you know, with, with, with R. And just to mention, you know, some interesting uh, uh, developments, right? That they have been uh, do, uh, been, been uh, uh, happening in R and in Python, but mostly in Python. Uh, the library ISLP that the authors are using for the exercises, uh, they use uh, the library lifelines, uh, the Python library lifelines, uh, you know, to do the all the all the uh, plotting and uh, uh, analysis of of the survival uh, uh, information. But they had there. There's been other uh, developments in this area. And one of them is very interesting. It's called uh, Psychic Survival, which uh, does the survival analysis but using the framework framework of Psychic Learn. Okay? So just to, you know, give you some ideas of what, it, what is going on. And in R, there's an interesting uh, package uh, I attended the webinar, I think it was a couple of, uh, two weeks ago. And this package should be uh, interesting to, you know, uh, to have in your uh, radar. Let me see that it doesn't do the spell check. It's called ggsurfit. Okay, so if you Google it, uh, you will see that uh, it kind of, uh, Uses ggplot as the as, as the plotting you know framework to then plot you know different uh, different graphs related to survival analysis, especially the KM, what is called the kepler mayer uh, plot. All right, so let's start with this uh, discussion, okay? And in the chapter, the learning ob objectives is uh, how to how how do we describe what is called sensor data, which is a terminology that is uh, fundamental to understand survival analysis or in general terms, what is called time to event analysis. And you'll see that survival analysis, it comes from the health, uh, you know, from the health domain. Uh, the time to event is a more generalized uh, concept from their survival analysis, but it's the same thing. Uh, then we're going to do some calculations. Uh, we're, we're going to discuss what basically is a Kaplan uh, Mayer survival curve. We're going to compare some survival rates of two groups with a long run test, which is kind of a you know a t test uh, from two groups, you know, with their you know corresponding uh, uh, means. Then we're going to do a model survival data using the Cox proportional hazards. Uh, we're going to study a little bit of the assumptions. And then if we have time, I mean, more or less, you know, the Python, uh, the Python uh, uh, book basically kind of stops there, right? In the Cox proportional hazards and more assumptions. But if we have time, we can go uh, and explain a little bit of shrinking methods, which is kind of a regularization for the Cox model and calculate some uh, I rendered the curve for a survival model, which give us a complete, more complete picture of how our model is uh, performing. Okay. Um, okay, so I found this uh, meme <laughs> from, uh, you know, one of my, uh, one of my research. And it says that you are either, you're either, you're, you're either die a hero or you live long enough to become right sensor. I want to discuss what right sensor means, but I found that you know, a little bit uh, 
uh, it's like a joke here, okay? In terms of uh, of you, you cannot, if you link enough, you will come right in other words, you know, you don't know if you are become a hero or not, right? So, but that, that goes to the core of what uh, a sensor data is. So in the survival analysis, what we're interested in is in trying to define or trying to uh, ex extract uh, a probability of an event occurring at a certain uh, period of time, okay? So for examples, uh, some examples of this is, for example, time for surgery uh, to death. Uh, some studies in survival analysis uh, have uh, a study, a cohort of uh, patients, and they're going. They want to determine from the group control and you know the the group that that is uh, uh, having having the uh, the procedure. Uh, try to verify how effective is certain types of surgery in terms of uh, prolonging the life of that uh, uh, patient, right? So we're interested in seeing you know, what is the probability of survival of certain kind of patients with certain kind of conditions if they have a surgery or they don't have a surgery. But as I said, because this is more like a time event analysis, we also can use this for fields that are not related to health. So for example, you can study if a customer, what is the probability of a customer to cancel a subscription for, you know, a different, uh, for, a, for, a, for, a, for a certain uh, application. And this is very important, uh, you know, to uh, forecast, uh, you know, revenue, uh, revenue for the company. And also in terms of understand what is causing the customer to cancel a subscription. So you can go more in detail on see which are, which are the factors that are going to contribute that. The thing is that when you do the study, let's say you do the study for three years, there will be observations, customers, that they're going to be canceling the subscription, but there are others who are going to be uh, maintaining the subscription. But you want to see what is the probability of those that are, have not canceled within those the period of time what is the probability of them to cancel in the future? Also, uh, reliability analysis, another you know, um, uh, terminology for time and event. We want to know what is the probability of a certain component or a certain machine to malfunction. And we use especially these techniques to try to determine that. So what is right censoring? Right censoring means that from a period of specific time that we're studying an event, we are going to have observations that are right to that event. Let's say that the event is defined as a, a death of a person, survival, death of a person. So within a period of time of your study, you're going to see that there's some uh, uh, persons that are going to arrive at that event. But then once the study stops, right? and you have a certain amount of time to study that, you see that there's some patients or observations that they had not arrived to that event. So that's what is called right censoring, that you know the start, right? The start of the event, but you don't know if the event was uh, achieved at the end of that uh, period, okay? so. If you look at this information, you will see that there's some observations that have a specific uh, you know, time of the event and others that are missing in that event. So for those missing that event, those are your sensor you know, uh, data. So you combine data that you are certain of the event plus data that you don't know, uh, you know, how, how, you know when, when the event Occur. In other words, the event didn't occur, so you don't know, you know, what is the time to 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 that event. Okay, is that kind of clear in this, you know, in 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 this explanation? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes, it's clear. You're following me. Okay. 
So, uh, we talked a little bit about the other fields, right? I talk about reliability analysis, duration analysis, event history analysis, time to event, the churn sample, et cetera. So you will have different terminology for the same, for the same study, which is you know, based on survival analysis. These are the aliases. Okay, and I included a, a video, and I'm going to show it uh, now, but this is a video also uh, introducing the concept of censorship because right now for uh, uh, simplistic purposes, we're going to only deal with right sensor, but you could have left sensor, okay? In other words, left censoring is when you don't know the start date, right? But you know the end, the end, the end date, the, the end result, okay? So for example, uh, for data that you don't know exactly when that person uh, started, you know the the you know the event that you are you are you are using. For example, you don't know the the birth date of a person, but you know, uh, you know, according to the information, how many years, how what what is the the probable age of that person. So that could be a left sensor uh, situation. Okay. Also, you know, uh, you have also intermediate censoring. You don't know the start event. You don't know the end event. So things can get a little bit complicated. So now, for now, we're going to do the, the most basic one, which is right sensor. We know the start event. We don't know, for some observations, we don't know when it ends. Okay. Um, that's basically, you know, what is explained here in the, in the next uh, uh, note. Uh, and some reasons for this sensor could be varied. For example, uh, let's say that I'm uh, studying uh, a cohort, right? A cohort of uh, 50, uh, 50 patients, okay? And some of the patients are going to arrive at the result, right? Depending, you know, if it's death or if it's, you know, some other some other uh, uh, event uh, that I was studying. But also could be that because we we didn't we lost the follow up of that patient. Uh, we don't know exactly what happened to the patient. Okay, in other words, you know, in a story lab, let's say in a clinical trial, we're going to study this cohort, and some of them we lose we lost contact uh, with them. So that could qualify also as a sensor because we don't know you know what happened to that uh, uh, patient. But for the ones that we are following up. Probably at the end of the study, there will be some people that are still uh, surviving uh, the event. Okay. Also, people that have with we are, you know withdraw from, from from the study. Okay, for different reasons, you know they uh, they change location or you know something happened that uh, they they withdraw. So those are the things that uh, could provoke what is called a right sensory. Okay, so in the in the book, uh, one of the uh, data sets that is uh, that is uh, provided in the and is provided also in the in the, in the Python package is what is called the brain cancer uh, uh, data set. And in the brain cancer, we have this you know uh, uh, data frame of uh, different variables: a uh, sex, diagnosis. Uh, location of the, you know, of the, of the, of the tumor, uh, something called KI, GTV, stereo, uh, and and all that. The two most in, most important in terms of how how do we uh, apply this to survival uh, analysis is those two at the right, which is status and time. The status is going to give us if the observation arrived to the event or didn't arrive, okay? So it's going to be a binary uh, factor that is going to tell us if it arrived to the event, that's not sensor, right? If it didn't arrive to the event, then that is sensor, all right? And in this case, let me see if I have the, the, uh, the explanation here. Okay, the status one, this indication of one here, let's say for this, observation, male, age, glioma, supratentorial, etc. This one means that uh, the event happened, okay? And it happened 
at this period of time from the start of the event. So we start, let's say, at the you know at the at, at the zero mark, and then uh, depending on what time frame is, you know, days, months, etc., or years, uh, we calculate the time of that uh, you know event to that, to have happened from the start of the event. In case that is zero, in case that is zero, that means that that event didn't occur, and this is the time when the 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 end of time occur all right so you have different uh time frames for on sensor data and also to sensor data and that's is is going to become something very valuable to you because then you can uh with the kaplan mayer curve you can then uh observe how is the decay in terms of survival of this group okay uh, from those two uh, those two uh, uh, features, all right. So uh, let me continue. Okay, here is okay for the brain cancer. We have a total of eighty eight uh, observations, which are eighty eight patients, right? Uh, we have some other predictors, uh, which are the other, you know, this set, right? This set of uh, of, of of variables of columns, and then we have the status and the time. And for uh, sensor uh, survival analysis, we always need these two uh, 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 columns, okay? One for the, if the, if the observation was sensor or not, and also the time frame uh, for each of the, each of the uh, observations, okay? All right, so uh, the kaplan Mayer. So the kaplan Mayer, uh, what is, uh, telling us is that for you know for the time of the study right for the time of the study in this case is 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 month um uh we're you're using this surf fit uh function is coming is coming from r um here time corresponds to y y with the index, right? You know, and you can see you know, this, uh, you know, months. So it's going to be by month. So y, y0 is going to be the start of the event. Y1 is going to be first month, second month, etc. So this is the equation that is going to give us the probability of the Kaplan, Kaplan mayor. So the probability that the T, the capital T, which is the time of the, of the event, surpasses the time that the small t which is the time of that of that event occurring okay and it's going to give us that s okay which is a survival function for that particular uh time all right so in this case when we do this uh plot okay using this uh function uh and as i said you can do the same thing in python using the the lifelines uh, uh package so when you do this, what you see is that there is a, a solid line, right, uh, in the center, which is the kaplan mayer curve. And what it's telling you is that, that, let's say, in 20 months, okay, that group, the whole, you know, the, the, the whole cohort, that group achieved a survival rate, a survival probability of X amount of time in the Y uh in the y uh, uh, axis, okay? So let's say that, you know, it's around 0 0.72, 0 0.71, 0 0.72 by two, two, 20 months. By 40 months, you see that the survival rate keeps decaying until there is kind of a plateau, okay, for about 50 months, okay? And these dotted lines are really confidence, uh, uh, confidence uh, intervals. And usually the default is going to be 95%. So this is the confidence intervals for this uh, survival uh, probability curve, which is the kaplan mayer curve, all right? And as I said, you know, this is for the group. But one of the interesting things is that we can divide this uh, probability curve, survival curve, into uh, different groups. So for example, if we want to do the, the Kaplan-Meier curve stratified by sex, we're going to add 
that uh that factor right you know with the with with this function serve time status and by uh you know stratified by by sex and then we'll have now instead of one solid line now we're going to have two solid lines okay as shown in the in the plot the red one is for female and the blue one the light blue one is for male and as you can see the the red one is kind of above usually kind of above the blue line that means that being a female well, for the same time instance there is a higher survival probability for a female than for a male and that's what it's saying here but we cannot you know uh uh make a conclusion out of this right away because we have to do some hypothesis testing correct so if we do a hypothesis testing using this function ggsurf plot and we can also do it in that package that i mentioned at the at the beginning it's called ggsurf fit uh now we have the same graph as we did before right but then uh we have then this uh statistic a p value of 0.23. So what he's saying here is that the difference of groups, right, between the female and the male, you know, with those curves, the uh the the uh let's say the 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 significance value for that uh difference is 0.23. Okay, the the t test from the 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 difference between these values. And usually, if we take a threshold of 0 0.05, which is when we reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternate, the null hypothesis in this case is that there's no difference between the survival rates of the females and the males. And the uh, alternative uh, alternate hypothesis is that there is a difference. That means that if we take that threshold of 0 0.05, because 0.23 is greater than 0.05, that means that there is really no significant. We don't have the elements to reject the null hypothesis, okay, from that from that value. So that means that there is really no statistical significance between uh, the groups, okay? Any comments? Are you still with me here? Can you hear? Okay. All right, so let's continue. Uh, I added precisely. I added the the GGSurf fit package, uh, you know, to give you uh, more or less, you know, how you know they they present uh, the data. In this case, the GGSurf plot, okay, it just presents, you know, the also the the risk table, which is the number of risk. So for any time instance, you can see uh, the people that have you know survived. Uh, the event within every you know every twenty, every every twenty months, but in this one, we also see not only uh, the observations, okay, uh, but also the 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 people the 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 people that are that are you know the the events, the number of events that compose that you know instance of months. So we have our risk, but also we have the number of events. Okay. Okay. So let me see here. Okay. Okay. So uh, as we discussed in, in, in the section, uh, we perform a log rank test, which is the, the one that is providing that p value. And we can do it uh, with this function. Okay. That, that's, in, that's in R. With this function, survive diff. And we get the long run test. We get the you know the, the 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 output and we get a rounded uh value of p value of 0 0.2 which is kind of a this is this is this is the same as a kind of contingency uh table analysis you know with chi square analysis where we uh, uh uh derive the p value from the observed and the expected uh values of each of the of, of the groups okay Okay, so 
let's continue. Okay. This part is going to be a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit more advanced. Okay. And this is uh, where we uh, try to explain what is the hazard function. So before going that, we are dealing here with probabilities, right? You know, from 100%, this one to 0%. The probability of the, the, the observations of the patients, in this case, surviving the event. Here in the hazard function, uh, there is a, a different paradigm here. And in the hazard function, what we are trying to assess is define at a given moment, moment T time, the potential risk of having an event uh, given you survive up to time T, all right? So to calculate this, uh, we need a little bit of calculus here, okay? Because what we are deriving here is a limit, okay? In other words, it's not a probability that we're deriving. It's more, more like a rate. That we are that we're doing. So this is the equation for the limit, and what I saying what it's saying is, what is the potential risk of that observation having an event, you know, achieving the event, given that it survived that event up to time t, and that's where that you know der derivative is coming from. So it's important to note. I'm just going to read this. It's important to note that the hazard. Uh, you know, the, 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 this function, the hazard rate of function is not probability because we're dividing the probability by the time inter interval, which is this one, okay? You know, uh, represented by mu. Instead, what we get is a rate. And since we're dealing with a condition of survival up to time t, this is why sometimes the hazard function is referred as a conditional failure rate. So what we're trying to assess here is the potential risk of achieving the event, given that it survived the event up to that time, all right? And this is very crucial. As, uh, remember that we're talking about uh, uh, machine reliability, uh, reliability studies. Uh, this is crucial for that, uh, for for that because we're not interested in, you know, if the if the observation is going to survive, is what is the you know what is the rate when that observation is going to happen and it has you know uh, a lot of implications for this so why would you care why do you care about this why we're talking about this well it turns that a key approach for modeling survival data as a function of covariance in other words regressors relies heavily on the hazard function okay so if we want to model this uh with uh, regressors with covariates. For example, if we want to model what is the hazard function of those patients achieving, uh, you know, uh, achieving the, the, the event of death because of their condition by, detected by sex, dictated by the, the tumor, dictated by certain factors, then we need this function. Okay? Okay, so Cumulative hazard function, since we're talking about a derivative here, right? So the cumulative hazard function is going to be this integral, okay? Of the function, the HV function, which is the minus log ST, uh, during a certain period of time, from zero to a certain period of time. So uh, to calculate this, you know, let, let's, let's plot this cumulative hazard for the brain cancer, which sex as a covariate. So with this uh, functions, GG surf plot, uh, fit sex, we're going to do exactly that, okay? And you can see that comparing, right? Comparing the kaplan mayer which is a survival probability, now we have kind of an inverse, kind of, because it's not exactly the same, but kind of an inverse for the hazard function. So what he's saying is for every instance of this time, uh, let's say on 20, this is the cumulative hazard. In other words, this is the rate where that event could be happening, okay? That event could be, you know, could be a, a achieved. And it's kind of, you know, it gives you kind of the inverse of the of the survival uh, probability, all right? Um, uh -huh. 
Uh, any any comments so far? Yeah, I didn't get to read it. I didn't get to read the chapter, but mm -hmm. it's not like when you were mentioning it being a rate, I was looking to see. So apparently it's the derivative of the so sur survivorship function. Did they mention anything of it being oops? Uh yeah. Yeah, this this yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. is the derivative of that log because they apply mm -hmm. a log, okay, an inverse mm -hmm. log to that uh you know uh survival function. Okay, but this yeah. one and this one is the same. Mm, yeah. That's how you get okay. kind of an inverse, yeah. uh, you know, uh, plot from the survival. But remember, these are cumulative hazards, okay? The, the, these are cumulative. They are not probabilities, okay? So what you're yeah. saying, what, what we're saying is, you know, as long as this progression, uh, you know, continues, we're going to have a greater rate of achieving that event. Okay. And of course, because we're using one, uh, you know, covariate, uh, we can, you know, split, right? Those, uh, those uh, cumulative hazard functions into male and female. And as you can see, the male has a higher rate of achieving the event than the female. And we could, you know, intuitively, we could deduce that because on the survival uh, probability, the females had a higher survival probability than the than the males. So this kind of inverses that uh, you know that that result. Okay. Okay, but the nice thing about this is that now we can talk about proportional hazards. Uh, you know, with the hazard function. So the proportional hazards is you know. Uh, 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 derived from this e equation. And what it does is that it's important from the nose, it's important to emphasize that the relative risk does not depend on time. It is constant in time from the same pair of values of any feature. So hazards are proportional independent of time. So if we take two observations, okay, and we put, you know, we, we, we assign this function of the cumulative hazard, you will see that the ratio of the hazard it's not depending on time for those, you know, for those pairs of observations. And that is critical because that's one of the assumptions of what is called the Cox proportional hazards uh, a regression model. Okay. Um, so we can use some specific distribution for the baseline. Remember, right now, for sim simplistic uh, uh, terms, we are assuming that the, the distribution of the hazard function is uh, Gaussian, is normal. But you could change that, okay? You can, you can use different distribution, for example, expression distribution, or even uh, the Weibull uh, distribution, which is usually used for uh, reliability analysis, okay? Because of the way, you know, the, the, the distribution is, uh, you know, is, 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 is uh, configured. But right now we're dealing with uh, a Gaussian, Gaussian distribution to make things a little bit more simple. In other words, the median, the, min, the mean and the mode are the same. In the Weibull or the exponential, you know that that's not the case. Uh, there's other parameters that define uh, the mean, all right? So, uh, okay. And then we get parametric uh, pH model and it's parametric because we're assuming a certain distribution in this case, the Gaussian distribution. Okay. Uh, let me see. Okay. So now, because we already, you know, discuss the hazard function, the proportional hazards, which is the assumption that the Cox uh, uh, cumulative uh, cost proportional hazards model uh, is based. So this model uh, uh, developed by Cox in 1972 is essentially a regression model that is commonly used, right, in medical research for investigating the association between survival time of patients and one or more predictor variables, all right? So the purpose of this model is to evaluate simultaneous uh, effect of several factors on the survival. So here, when we apply the Cox pH, right, uh, function, Okay, this is from the survival, uh, by the way, this is from the survival package that is, uh, you know, usually 
I don't know if it's a, I don't remember if it's a base R or you have to install it, but it's, it's usually the main uh, base package for survival analysis in R. So the Cox pH is what is going to give us the, the, the estimates, the estimates of all of the, all of the regressors that you're going to be using for this model. So we're going to do the same thing, right? The same thing that we did for the log run test, right? We're going to use sex as a predictor of the sensor, the the, the sensor uh, data that we have uh, defined uh, by time and status on this uh, data set. And as you can see, once you have the model, then it's like an LM model, okay, or a GLM model. You can use the summary uh, function to get the the coefficients of this uh, of, of this model. And because sex is a factor, right? Sex is a factor. That means that there is going to be a one hot encoding. So you're going to see only the male because the female is going to be the base and then you're going to see the male. And as you can see from this positive, uh, uh, from this positive coefficients, that means that compared to the female uh, uh, patients, the males, have a higher uh, a rate, right? A higher instance to achieve the event than the males because of the positive uh, way to do. And of course, you know, because this is log, you have to do the exponential, uh, use the exponential function to get the real uh, coefficient, the real magnitude that is similar to an odds ratio. Okay, from the, remember from the binary, the logistic regression, this is basically the same. It's like a notch ratio in terms of how much, you know, uh, uh, how much uh, 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 the occurrence, how how likely is the occurrence depending if the person is a male or a female, okay? And as you can see, you know, we have some of these uh, statistics concordance, which is, a similar statistic, similar statistic, it, it does the job of the R square in the in the regression model. So the higher the concordance, the more the model explains the variation of you know the the the, the regressors, the, regre the the regressors and the and the predicted value. And the likelihood ratio, ratio tests, wall tests and score land tests, they have, have a p-value of 0.2. In other words, that means that there is no significance between the different factor of sex. So there's no significant uh, difference between a female and a male in this case. Okay, so far so good here? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so here, because of this p-value, we see that there is no clear difference for, for uh, in survival between males and females. So let's do the same function, right? The Cox pH, but now with all the all the regressors that we have in that database, and we are going to see that we have uh, the gender, we have the diagnostic, uh, we have the 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 location, which is supratentoria or the other one is a binary factor too. They get the Chi, GTV, and stereo RST. And as you can see, only two of them are significant. Uh, you know, relying on the p-value, which is the diagnostic HG uh, glioma, and then the Chi. The others, uh, they are not you know significant in terms of differentiating if the person uh, is going to achieve the event or not. Okay, and we have a concordance of points seven nine four, which is of course, which is higher, higher. And for the whole model, which is like an F F test in the linear model, for the whole model, we have a p value less than point zero five, which means that the model, the whole model, is statistically significant. All right. Okay, so. Um, so having a Cox model to the data, it's possible to visualize the predicted survival por proportion at any given time for a particular risk group. So with this, you're going to uh, do the surfeit uh, 
you know, a, a function, which is fit all Cox, which is this one, fit all Cox model, which is the Cox proportional Hassan's model uh, with all the regressors. And then as we can see, we have this uh, line uh, here that is going to give us uh, the survival, you know, the survival uh, uh, baseline probability for the whole, you know, the whole core. Okay, as you can see, this is different than the Kaplan Mayer that we that we that we use, right? Because in the Kaplan Mayer, uh, we are we are determining survivor probabilities, but it's only for for the sensor data and the time. Here, we're adding more information. We're adding uh, regressors. Uh, to this. So this one is uh, more uh, statistically uh, uh, trustworthy than the, the one that we did with the Kaplan Meyer. All right. That, that's why it's, it's, it's a little bit different because we have a more shallow uh, curve here. Okay. And this is another, you know, plot from the, this is from the GG Stats plot uh, 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 package. Okay, and this clearly gives you a glimpse of the covariates and which are uh, statistically significant or not. The ones that crosses the zero, okay, from the confidence intervals of the estimates, the one that crosses the zero, that means that the p-value is greater than 0 0.05. If it doesn't cross, then it's statistically significant. So chi, it stays right there, right? It doesn't touch the, the dotted line, the zero line, and also, uh, the HG glio uh, factor, which also, you know, way, way to the right and doesn't touch the confidence level, doesn't touch the zero mark. All right. Okay. So some assumptions. Okay. And we're going to, you know, leave it here. So the Cox proportional hazards model, just like the regression model, makes several assumptions. Uh, it is important to assess whether a fitted cost regression model adequately describes this data. Describes this data. So you have to, you know, do some testing in the proportional hazard assumption. So you have to compare, you know, some of the some of those pairs of observation to see if the time is not a factor affecting that proportional hazard assumption. Then you have to you have, you have to examine influential observations because remember this is a regression model. And now liars usually have a have a tendency to distort to distort the coefficients of the you know uh, of, of of the model, and also uh, if there is some nonlinearity in the relationship between the log hazard and the covariates, well, that's not going to be detected in this model because this model assumes that it's linear, the log hazard and the covariates. Okay. So let me see if I have just some time here to show you uh, the Python. The Python, uh, let me see if I, I think I did it. Yeah, yeah, I, I did it, I did it. So let me show you the, the Python version. <laughs> uh, Visual Studio Code, okay, bear with me. Okay, survival, survival analysis. Okay, here we go. Okay. All right. Here we are. Let me go back, go back here, okay. Hey, can you see my screen? Uh, yeah, you put there. Yeah. Okay, so we're using the ISLP uh, environment, you know, from the, uh, from the book. Uh, we're going to import uh, some of the usual libraries, uh, pandas, numpy, matplotlib, but then from the ISLP models, we're going to uh, import model spec as MS, and we're going to import uh, the data, okay? Because the data is included in the ISLP. 
the brain cancer data. Okay, so let's see that everything loads properly, right? Okay, so now uh, from that package that I mentioned at, at the beginning, Lifelines, which was the traditional package that was you know, uh, available for this kind of analysis, there are other packages uh, now. Uh, we're going to import from Lifelines, we're going to import the kaplan Meyer feeder, the Cox pH feeder, the Lifeline statistics, right? The log rank, multivariate rank, and the survival uh, is called the same time. Okay. So we're going to uh, load that. And then from the load data, right? Remember the load data uh, function from the ISLP uh, library? We're going to load the brain cancer. Okay. And as you can see, the columns, which are the, you know, the variables are the same as we saw in the in the R example: sex, diagnosis, log, chi, GTV, stereo, status, and time. Then, if we do just a value count on the on the sex, for example, how many how many are female, how many are male? Uh, we do this right, and we see that in this cohort, forty five uh, patients are female, forty three are male. And if we do a count on the diagnosis which is the, the one that it had the, the gliomas, uh, et cetera, uh, we see, you know, the distribution of this, you know, uh, also factor. And for the status, which is the one that uh, indicates if the, uh, the observation was sensor or not, in other words, if it achieved the event or it does the event within, within that uh, particular frame of time, we see that we have uh, 53 uh, patients uh, that uh you know were a sensor right and the ones are the non-sensor in other words they achieve uh, the event which is which is death in this case so we have uh from 88 35 patients died during uh the time frame of the study okay so to calculate the to plot the kaplan mayer uh fitter which is only you know it, it just takes only two you know, two components, the time and the status, right, of the of the observations, uh, we see a chart similar to the one that we, you know, saw before with the, with the, with the uh, R packages, okay? Then if we add in the mix, the group by, right, the group by sex, we're going to get this kind of uh, plot, which is basically the same as the one that we, uh, that, that, that we saw before, okay? And if we want to calculate their long run, long, long run test, which is the test that determines if there is a significant difference between these two groups, the male and the female, then we do this, you know, uh, uh, function with these uh, parameters, okay? Uh, usually in Python, uh, you have to, you know, code a little bit more, right? <laughs> you know, it's not that, uh, compact like in the in the R uh, 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 function. So in this case, let me see. Okay, uh, we have an error here. Let me see by sex. Okay, we have this. Let me see what is the error here. Okay, by sex is not defined. Okay, here we go. Yeah, because I I, I didn't I didn't create the by sex. Uh, uh, you know, group by. So here, what we have is that the long run test, which is a chi squares, chi square test, contingency table, uh, we have a p value of 0.23, the same one that we also calculated uh, with the with the R uh, functions. Okay. Uh, next, we're going to calculate the Cox proportional hazards, right? And these are the, the instructions. We instantiate the uh, the function. Cox uh, pH fitter, then uh, we uh, 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 we create a data frame, okay, from the time, the status, which is the component for the you know for the sensor, the survival of object, and then the sex. Then we model it, it and we calculate and we fit it. We calculate the 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 covariate, the covariate, the estimates of the regressors. All right. 
So let's do this. And here you see that uh, we have from the, you know, the same thing, uh, because we have an, a one hot encoding, we're going to be only seeing the male part and the male part because it's positive, it has a P, a P value of 0.1023, which is the same as the one with the Kaplan mayor. But uh, we have a, a, a positive covariance. So that means that there is a, 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 a higher chance of the male's patients achieving the event than the female patients. All right. Uh, let's do the log likelihood, uh, uh, also function uh, ratio, ratio test, right? Okay, and it gives you basically the same thing as the as the log log round test here. Okay. Um, let me see. Okay, so this is the the instruction to uh, run the Cox, right? The Cox uh, uh, proportional hazards uh, model. Uh, but with all the uh, all the regressors, like we did, like we did before, okay. And here we go. You know, we have the table with all the regressors. Uh, some are going to be one hot encoded, so it's going to be a base. And you see that the results are the same as the as the one that we saw, uh, with a significant for the factor of he. Uh, let me see he. Uh, uh, what is H Lioma? Okay. Uh that one in here is interesting. That one, that one is was taken as the base. Okay. The H Lioma. So you have to be a little bit careful with that one. Because now we're getting the base at H Lioma, and we know from the R uh, version that is uh, significant. So it gives it gives us a significant diagnosis in the menin uh, glioma because of because of, of the you know of the base. And the chi is still, you know, because it's a numeric, it doesn't do the whole 100 coding. Uh, is, uh, so we have to do a little bit of uh, work here to get, you know, uh, at the base right so we get the significance factor from the HG glioma. All right. I didn't notice that, you know, there was uh, something different here. Okay. And then what else? Uh, well, let's see. Okay, so we plan some estimate curves. Let me run this. Okay, let me run this. This. Okay, predicted value, and then from the predicted value survival, then we can get the, uh, you know, the the survival rates, and these are survival rates. Uh, from not from sex, but from the uh, the the tumor, okay. The, the the tumor that is you know uh, causing causing the the brain the brain cancer, and as you can see, there are various uh, survival rates here, depending on the you know on the on the tumor. So the menin glioma, which is the most benign, has a higher rate than you know what what it says others uh, here. Okay, and basically that's it for the for the brain cancer. All right, so let me do the end.